Okay, this is going to be a quick demonstration on the use of buffers in ArcGIS Pro. And in its simplest form, a buffer can be defined as a space around a point, line, or polygon. It can be overlapping and it can be of any distance. So uh, I've got paint here set up and I'm going to do my best here to draw on here. And this doesn't always work the way I want. We're going to give it a try. So I'm just going to make a point here. So I'm going to also put a point here. So these could be anything. You could think of them as groundwater wells. They could be um, they could be a city. They could be really anything that could be represented by a point. And a buffer can be really any shape. I'm going to use a circle since we often develop buffers as circles and just define any radius around that and that space around it would be its buffer. Now I can draw another one that could be smaller like that around that and I'm going to do one more to show that's very small. So I'm going to just make that a little bit bigger. I could also draw a buffer, which could be quite large and overlap adjacent buffers. Okay. And this is important when we start using the buffer tool in ArcGIS Pro, because there are some circumstances where buffers can overlap and we have some decisions we have to make how we're going to deal with that. Now, for today's example, um, I'm going to do a really simple and probably, I wouldn't call it completely irrelevant, but um, I can't think of the best way to describe this, but it's certainly not an accurate analysis. Um, and what I want to show you is how you can uh, look at things within a buffer zone to calculate um, a number within it. So what I've got is I've started a project, I call it buffer map, and I have a folder already connected that has some US cities. This one's called US cities new. If I drag that in, you can see that it contains the major cities within the United States. And if I right click and look at the attribute table, it has things like the name, the class, which obviously is city, a state abbreviation, population, population per square mile, so on and so forth. So there's some attributes that go along with each of those features. What I thought would be interesting is to look at uh, one of our favorite sporting events, which is the Super Bowl, and to see if we can use a buffer to calculate the population within a certain proximity to see if that can be used as a predictor of whether or not a team will win or not. Now, this 2024, the Super Bowl has already occurred, and we know who the winners are. So what I want to do is see if we develop buffer zones around the cities where the teams are housed to see if a larger fan base actually leads to a win. Now, I've done this analysis before on prior ones. It sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Obviously, it's not a good indicator, but it is a useful example and kind of an interesting example of how we can use buffer maps. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the two cities where the teams that competed are from. And for this year, 2024, the two teams that competed were the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The one thing to remember about Kansas City is there is two of them, and the Chiefs are actually housed in Kansas City, Missouri. So when we pull out those two cities from this U.S. cities new, we need to make sure that we get just the Kansas City that we need. Now, San Francisco, there's one San Francisco that shows up at least in this data set. So to do that, so here I'm going to extract just the two cities that I want and make it into its own feature class and have it contain just the elements I want. That will help me down the road um, when I'm doing um, my actual analysis to keep things separate. So I'm going to right click on this US cities new 
I'm going to go down here to data and export features. So what I want to do is define which cities I want extracted and copied into a new feature class. The input is obviously US cities new. The output I'm going to call SFKC for San Francisco and Kansas City. I'm going to drop the filter down here and I'm going to say where name is equal to, first of all, we'll do San Francisco and I can just start typing to plot San Francisco. I'm going to add a clause and I'm going to use or because remember, it's going to iterate line by line to see if it meets these qualifications. So here it says, I want you to see if the name is equal to San Francisco or if the name is equal to Kansas City. And of course, you could use the drop down to grab it. But again, there's two. Now we're not done here because as it gets to this clause, we need to have it do a second check to make sure we're actually looking for the Kansas City in Missouri. So I'm going to hit the plus to add a clause. This time I needed to have the and because it needs to meet both name equal to Kansas City and the state abbreviation equal to MO for Missouri. So that way it doesn't pull out the incorrect one. Now we're not done there. We could be, but we really do not want to save all those additional fields. Really all we want is the name and the state abbreviation is fine, but we really don't even need that. We really just need the name. So what I need to go in here is remove the fields I don't want. Because again, it's going to make our life so much more simple if it only contains the name. So I'm going to remove class. I'm going to remove state abbreviation. And be careful if you have name highlighted and you accidentally hit the X. Um, I'm not sure if there is a reset. No, yes, there is a reset. You can reset it and start over. Uh, just be careful you don't delete the pieces that you're going to need. And don't worry about that population. We're going to use a separate file for that. So you can see I've x this all the way down to just name. So by the time I'm done, I should just see the points with the name. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that ran quite quickly. It doesn't look like anything happened, but that's because it's just making a copy of the pieces that I need from the US Cities New. So if I turn US Cities New off, I can see I now have the two cities I need. So now we're finally to the point where we can build a buffer. Before we do that, I'm going to show you what the attribute table looks like for this new file I built. And you can see now I just have the name. This object ID and shape are required. We don't get a choice on this, but it does contain only information that we need. So I want to build some circular buffers around this. I don't want them to be overlapping. So I'm going to try to encompass as much population as I can without overlapping. So I'm going to use the measure tool here. On, I'm just on the map tab. Click on measure. And the default here for this is planar and metric. Yours might be geodesic. Um, that's fine. Use which one it is. It sort of seems weird that we'd have geodesic, but because we're looking at a two-dimensional map, it should be planar, but sometimes the projection gets weird. So just use whatever the defaults there and change this from metric to miles because I want to know how many miles it is between clicking once San Francisco, clicking again over here on KFC, or not even clicking and noting that it is 1,930 miles, okay? So I want to split that distance so I don't have overlap. So I'm not smart enough to know what the half of that is. So 1,930 divided by 2 is 965. So that will be the radius of this buffer that I'm going to build. That will make it so we don't have overlap. Yes, I did get rid of the decimal. That just ensures I have no overlap. Okay, so let's build the buffer. I'm going to close my measuring tool here. And I'm now going to go to my analysis tab and go to tools. And I'm going to type in buffer. And 
you can just use the standard analysis tool, but I have multiple cores on the computer I'm working on. And if I use pairwise buffer, it will leverage those and make it more efficient. Now, this is not a particularly heavy analysis or a very big buffer to generate. Buffer by itself would work, but it's good to get in the habit, especially if you have a machine capable of it, of using pairwise buffer. Now, the input feature here is going to be our San Francisco, Kansas City. And I'm going to call this one SFKC underscore buffer. So I know what it is. I'm going to set the distance to 965. And I'm going to make sure that underneath linear units, I change that to statute miles. Leave whatever the default here is. Again, you should be in planar. If you're not, don't worry. It's a projection issue. And we're going to leave this as no dissolve. We really don't have to worry about this. Do you remember the example I gave you with paint? So if we did do dissolve, what would happen is we would essentially get rid of any of this overlapping buffer and it would look something like that. So that would be a dissolve. Obviously, we're not worried about that because the 965 miles is slightly less than the halfway mark between those locations. So I'm ready to run that buffer. And here you can see I've generated two buffers around San Francisco and Kansas City. Now, um, that is kind of half the work that we need to do here. I'm going to go ahead and, and close this geoprocessing because I'm going to bring my US Cities new back in by turning it on. I want to calculate the population encompassed within this. So we have a tool to do this, and it's spatial join. Spatial join is very, very good and very easy to use to count the number of instances within here. To get it to actually create a summary or to add up a field within this um, is a little bit tricky. I might not get it right the first time. It's a bit clumsy. There are lots of gotchas. I'll try to cover those because if you miss one, it's a nightmare and it won't work right. So if you're not getting the correct numbers, revisit it, watch the video again. And again, it might take me more than one iteration to get this right. So the tool to use is spatial join. Yes, you can get to that from tools, but I'm going to go right to the spatial join here to bring up that dialog. And my target feature are these large buffers. And that's easy because they're round like a target would be. So make sure you have the correct, uh, the correct feature for your target. And your join feature here will be the US cities new, not San Francisco KC, because we need all the cities that these intersect with. Okay, and we're going to leave the rest of the defaults other than I'm going to put the output as pop analysis, and you can do that however you want. I'm going to retain the rest of these things. What I do need to do, though, is I need to set the fields to calculate what I want. Um, and this is where it gets tricky. If we do this wrong, it's just you end up going back and forth. So I've hit all I've done right now is hit the drop down for fields. I'm going to hit the edit button here to edit the field properties because I need to tell it not just to count the number of instances, but I need it to total all the population from each of these cities. And if you remember back to the attribute table, every city had a population tied to it. So I'm going to go into edit here. And here are the two pieces, my target feature and my join feature. And it just basically defaults to the first piece up here. Now, I really don't need the rest of this information. All I need is population and name in this new file I'm going to create called population analysis. So it knows that I want to pull the name from the San Francisco, Kansas City buffer. What it doesn't know is that I need population out of the US cities news. So I'm going to get rid of everything but population. Now, here's one of the gotchas. 
See how names highlighted? And if I go to buff distance, if I accidentally click this remove here, let me demonstrate what happens. You see my name is now gone. I can't bring it back, so I have to come up here and hit the reset and say yes, I'm okay with resetting that. So I'm back where I started. Make sure you click directly on something like the buff distance and hit the X. You, so you have to click on a separate one to get that highlight removed from name. I need it to be there. If I accidentally remove it, I've got to reset and start over. Don't forget, you need to just click on something else here. So I'm gonna remove everything but name and population. And there's population. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to click on pop class, pop square mile. I'm going to get rid of everything. So now I have the two pieces I need. The problem is it's pointing to um, population in, nope, that's good. It's in San Francisco new. And we have name on San Francisco buffer. Okay, so let's make sure we've got what we need. So I'm going to click on the SFKC buffer and see where it says population here is the field. We really need name for that. Okay, so I've clicked on name. I'm going to hit OK. Okay, and then I'm going to click on US cities here and I'm going to click on population. Now, the trick here is to change this from first to sum, and that's going to sum my population. If you did this right, you can hit OK and run. It says it's complete. I'm going to turn off the original buffer here, and I'm left with population analysis. Now, crossing my fingers, if I right-click on pop analysis, I go to the attribute table, I now have the population encompassed by the San Francisco buffer zone and the Kansas City buffer zone. Now, by all rights, or based on this analysis, Kansas City has the higher population coming in at about, what, 82 million within that buffer zone, so they have a larger fan base. Therefore, they should have won the Super Bowl, which they did. Now, if you go back one year, this analysis does not work. So if you do this for 2023, which I'd encourage you to do so you can see whether or not this works, um, this analysis fails. But it, again, it makes it an interesting example of buffers and how we could potentially use it to do a spatial analysis. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.